Alpha team report. What's up? Still nothing. You lost both teams? Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Hey, like yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He will defend his police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to take the law. We enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every man can go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is October 26, 2016, and we're coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada, or Nevada. I can't believe I said Nevada like the fucking Taurus. Um, thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All media and radio network, which now runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can listen live on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com and to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes on Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And we, of course, are always happy to hear from you. You can reach us via phone at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or via Skype at username nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. And I'm still trying to figure out, ah, uh, fuck. I had my sound one level. One side was down more than the other the past few weeks i've been trying to get my sound back to i don't know maybe i'm just like a perfection well i am a perfectionist so i'm not gonna say maybe i'm just like a perfect no i am a perfectionist and i want my sound to be like i'll listen to old shows especially now that we run 24 7 and occasionally I'll turn it on to see, you know, make sure it's coming through okay and whatnot. And I'll hear the sound on an old show and I'll be like, well, that fucking sounds better than the new shows. And I don't know even my voice if I'm talking louder because I feel like I am. Although in a way it's a good way because a good thing because I've listened to old shows where I was talking like I I was falling asleep <laughs> and I've heard old shows like that. So I definitely one thing that I've noticed I've been doing the past couple of weeks. I don't know how I've been doing it because I'm always tired. Like I swear I have permanent mono or something. And when I had mono, I was not this tired. I had mono when I was 18. But anyway, um, I want to get the sound at least back to, I was at a point where I was like, there it is. That's exactly what I want. It sounds perfect. And I don't feel like the sound, I think feel like the sound is not as good as it used to be. So I don't know. I, I might have to just unhook everything, rehook up everything, test everything. Although, the thing that sucks now is 
I'm running Spreaker 24 hours a day. So if I happen to um, stop to test, um, I would have to be off the air for a certain amount of time and whatever. I guess I could just stop in between um, because I run on two computers. So it's not a big deal. Or uh, I have a external recorder that I use for a backup that I haven't been using because it keeps giving me an error, which I think is uh, another thing I have to test, but I think is the card in there. Anyway, um, we're going to start it out today a little different, uh, as is with us every Wednesday is uh, Ken Chorgin of The Daily Economist and of uh, the Ken Chorgin YouTube channel. I always got to think of what should I say it is, but the Ken Chorgin YouTube channel, I guess, because that's the name of the YouTube channel where you can get uh, at least two podcasts a week, if not three. Definitely Monday and uh, Wednesdays, but uh, sometimes Fridays as well, depending on Ken's uh, schedule. But uh, one of the things, well, first, before we get to that, um, what we were going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame real quick, because me and Ken were having, having a conversation off air right before we went on air. But I want to talk about just really quick when I was leaving work today and, and as a matter of fact, I was on the phone with, with Ken. (laughs) So (laughs) as Ken, when I was talking to you and I didn't mention it because it, nothing ended up happening, but a cop was like pulled up on side of me and they're doing road work. So he moved behind me, but it was like really hard for him to follow me. So it looked like he was like fuck it and turned off because he couldn't follow me but he just like looked at me and I don't know if it was the way I looked at him or whatever was like or he saw you know I was on the phone but I was on you know we have that dumb law that you can't you know hold the phone to your ear but I was on my earpiece but I had like my phone on my leg or something um also the I tend to get harassed by the police, especially if they pull anything up on me because then they see the uh, obstruction of a police officer twice. Well, twice I was arrested for it. Wasn't convicted of it twice. Should have never been convicted of it at all. But um, that just means like that's one of those catch-alls like disorderly conduct or one of those bullshit things just, you know, they should just call it like I felt like arresting you because you didn't kneel down and blow me um, laws. So I don't know. I just wanted to mention that, that he looked over at me and then right away he pulls up behind me. But it looked like the only reason that he didn't follow me and possibly pull me over was because the road work was kind of getting in his way. He was on a motorcycle which I hope he fucking falls off on right right when he's going like 60 miles an hour. So anyway, um, before we came on air, uh, Ken had mentioned the Rock, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which he has a seems to have a gripe with. And um, I can't say I blame him as we were getting into our conversation. And then we were kind of in the middle of, a com- of the conversation when... Uh, I had to go to get uh, on air. So, uh, Ken, are you there? I am here. Okay. So, I guess it says I got your uh, article. So, there's only five slots. So, I, I, I don't get this. You know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is, I don't know. It's kind of stupid in a way. It's just, I, and, and it doesn't have... You know, at least, so we have like the football hall of fame, right? And the basketball, baseball, whatever. Um, I don't know. Is there there a hockey hall of fame? I don't follow hockey. I don't know that you do neither. Is there? It's it's in Canada. 
I could care less. Uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, I know how to play hockey, but and I used to be able to name all the teams, but I can't now because of expansion. And I could care less about hockey. I, I, it's it's a fucking retarded sport to me. But um, any any sport that the sport is not fighting, and don't get me wrong, like I used to get in a lot of fights, so I really didn't give a fuck. But if you're going to stop a game to have a fight and then say that that's part of the game, that's retarded, unless it's boxing. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And you're on skates, and it's just, I don't know, whatever. Half the guys don't have teeth. It's it's disturbing. So, um, uh, and on top of that, I really, the only sport, because I'm so disgusted with corporations and how these, uh, companies like the NBA, major league baseball, uh, as well as the NFL. But I mean, I like football so much that I still watch it, but I won't pay for the package. Um, the, they get involved in politics. Now what happened with Colin Kaepernick, Never mind the other stuff, because uh, I don't want to get in a big conversation on that. But just the fact that not standing for the national anthem for whatever reason, because I don't stand for it neither. And that's not because of the same reasons. Um, I don't stand for it because I believe the government oppresses its people. It's an oligarchy, whatever. The police, you know, all this shit. Um, so I don't stand for it neither. And I agree with that, but they really are just saying, well, we can't say anything. But they have endorsed Obamacare, and we'll talk a little about that today. I know you had uh, a story about that. Um, They've politically gotten involved in a lot of things. And it's not just the NFL. It's all of the, you know, the NBA. um, I'm sure the NHL as well. I just don't follow them. So I, I can't really stand them. So all I do... The only sport that I love enough to still watch, and I don't watch it as much as I do or as often as I I used to. Um, I'll watch when the Raiders play, or um, I'll still watch uh, Patriots when the Patriots play, or maybe if it's a good game and I have nothing to do, but usually I'll only do that with college. So they just kind of make me sick. But anyway... um, my point being is that, you know, you have measurable stats, I, I guess, with the and, and there's always arguments about that, too. Like, oh, you shouldn't get in, you know, for some sports, I think all of them, they'll argue if you get in on if you're a first ballot Hall of Famer, like you, there shouldn't be first ballot Hall of Famers, no matter how good you are. And that's like retarded. I, I don't know why. If you're that because, good, because of, because of tradition, I know, because but it, I, I hate tradition. I, tradition is something. Well, some sports are are base, you know baseball is tradition. Well, so baseball has been around, right? Right, it's been around forever. You but know. so so does fo- football has not professional, but college football has gone back to that far as well. Right. You know, they talk about like the Yale Harvard game or something. I think it's Yale Harvard. Yeah, that's it's gone back. You know, they've played each other for like a hundred years. Um, so yeah, that goes back as well. But tradition is usually based on things that I don't like that I would rebel against. Of course, being a rebel, but I'm not sure of all the criteria what the criteria is for the rock and roll hall of fame as far as, so I'm, I'm assuming, and I had said this to you when we were talking that you have, you have to have been in music like at least 20 years because Tupac is actually on this, which I know you have an issue that rappers are on it and it's rock. Um, I guess there could be a rap hall of fame, but it's really, which there is. Is there? And there's a country music hall of fame. And I, I and should know that. Guys. But but fine, yeah. you could do that with every type of music. I mean, this is kind of the rock rock and roll hall of fame. Really, every music comes from kind of rock and roll in a way. It, it it you know or really blues. See, the worst part the worst part is that they named it rock and roll hall. of yeah, Fame. Yeah, I, I understand. Had it been had it been the music hall of fame, 
because the criteria is this. Artists must be eligible for induction or become eligible 25 years after release of their first record. Okay. And it must include influence and significance of the artist's contributions to the development and perpetuation of rock and roll. Well, and see, they specifically say – right. Rock and roll. Right. That's uh, so rap uh, is not rock and roll. Right. You, Country so, is not rock and roll. Uh gospel music is not rock and roll, you know, etc. Right. No, I, I understand um they should change they, they they should change that if they're gonna do this. Because you yeah, I mean you have a valid point if that's what it says. Um but like somebody like Tupac, I mean the influence that he's had on millions of people whether yeah, not, you like them not, or not, you can't not deny that. But people, though, but it's it, on music. Okay, uh, if you if you limit your music to musically one specific, on millions of people, right? But, but, if you, but, but even if as an influence, if but your influence is limited to one genre of music, okay, then well, that's everybody's not one about significant change. Everybody's usually one genre of music. Um, there's some people that you know are mess around with kind of like pop pop i i don't know even what the fuck pop is because pop could be rock rockish pop or like r&b pop or i mean but for the most part wouldn't you say that most groups are one genre of music not necessarily in general Um, in general i'm not saying every single eagles The Eagles are a band that uh, could go into country. They could go into rock and roll. They could go into pop. Their music stems the you know at least four different genres. Eh, But that's you know one group. But I mean in general, um, and I'm not take a look at take a look at the Cure. The Cure could do rock and roll. They could do punk. They can do, you know, pop. They is punk do, not rock and roll? I mean, so now, no, punk is not rock but and now roll. we get into the definition of what is rock and roll, because that's open to interpretation as well. What is rock? rock what is rock and roll? Rock uh, and roll is based on a specific type of chord beat. But does it say that within the rules or does it just well, say no, rock but and roll? But, but do you remember where the term rock and roll came from? It came from no. a gentleman named Alan, I think Alan Freed, who was a DJ Actually, I do. Yeah, in the yeah, 50s yeah. in Cleveland, Ohio. I, I remember Alan Freed because he was one of the payola guys, I believe. Yeah, exactly. And he coined the term in the 1950s as a DJ in Cleveland, Ohio. And that's why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, you know, and it was that probably and there's the, nothing else there anymore. So why not have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You know, Bill Haley's Rock Around the Clock. You can, you can, you know, that type of chord beat is the is the basis. Yeah, but there's a huge, it. there's a huge. I mean, you can look at songs from the '50s that they called rock that they originated as rock that you would hear them compared to other stuff that people would call rock and roll and and i understand what you're saying if you're basing it off that definition but now you're getting very very technical and the amount of groups that you'd be able to put in would shrink immensely because you look at like elvis is considered of course rock and roll but then like is guns and roses rock and roll i mean they're yeah. are they're they heavy metal uh well uh, heavy heavy is, metal it, heavy metal is an extension of rock and roll is okay. is nirvana uh, are they alternative is Blink One Eighty Two because they're punk. They're more punk than rock and roll, but they have rock and roll chords. Um, you know what I mean. So you get into a whole, you know, country is no, but, in but, rap but, or, but see, are are, sort of, are, are good you, you examples just, that you can de- define. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, you just you just sort of, in a sense, contradicted your own argument because rock and roll is big enough to have a plethora of different types of styles that fit under the rock and roll category. But it doesn't seem like based off the, if you go by that definition, if you narrow, you know, how narrow is that definition? Like, would you, would you consider disco rock and roll? No, No. disco has its own specific type of, of beat sequence. 
and chords that distinguish it as disco. Would you consider folk music like the Mamas and the Papas or, uh, you know, well, that's not folk. I think that's more Peter, like Paul and Mary. R&B. Well, folk yeah, music that's has, folk. has a yeah, yeah. has a specific. Yeah, but- no, I, I agree with you that you know, like rap is is definable. Country is very definable. Um, there's stuff like that comes on the edges where you you use the Eagles as an example, and I know some of their stuff, but or Kid Rock would be a good example too where he has rock and roll songs. The, he even has rap songs that he did that sound like straight up rap, like his first album that most people haven't heard. Um, he has, you know, country songs. So there are people that, y- you're right, that do cross, uh, you know, all these genres. There's not a lot, but I mean, there are people that kind of you know, you could put them in all of these genres. And I understand what you're saying. If you go by the, so is that your issue or is your issue more like the list of people that are I do a actually in Photoshop. Um, this pen is something I've been wishing for for a long time. Nominated. I mean, I go in very no, it's a combination now of something's of playing both. from this article. Something was just playing from uh, oh, this well, article. It's not, and a, It's not doing on mine. You might... I've, I've got ad yeah, block, you so maybe you don't have ad here. block. Um, so I, I uh, got out of it, but let me get back in. But um, it wasn't doing it at first. It just all See, let, let me go through. Let me go through the list. And you know, here's the thing. Um, supposedly, the individuals who, uh, you know, the old fogies. Think, think about this. Let me give you an example of how ludicrous the subjective uh, choices of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are. Okay. If I were to tell you there's a band that has had a number one hit in the pop charts for for five decades, a number one hit in five different decades, do you think they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Um, it, it, off the top of my head, I would say... Nobody's ever done this. The Beatles didn't do it. Elvis I, didn't do it. Uh, well, uh, Rolling Stones didn't uh, wait, do it. yeah. Off the top of my head, I would say, yeah. But if that was like, yeah, I mean, if that was their only, the only what, hits. What do you mean had, only? No, they've been playing. But, they've been they've been having hits for fifty year, or yeah, forty yeah, plus years. Yeah, right. They just got in the Hall of Fame last year. They are the what, only what group, group. What group are you talking about? Chicago. Oh, I actually like uh, some some stuff from exactly. Chicago. Chicago I'm is not a huge. Chicago had had a, uh, a well. Basis. Is Chicago rock and roll? See that that's that's an uh, if if they they were they were ground on rock and roll. If you listen to their first several things, because I and think then they of the, into the pop genre. Yeah, like the the stuff I think of is hard hard for you to say. I'm sorry. And, yeah, but and think all of that. Those, that's before. the stuff I like, but from right. them actually. <laughs> so See, there, there's a big difference between when they started out for the first uh, say ten twelve years, and then the Peter Cetera years. Why? Why after. before they they were around before him. Oh yeah! As a matter of fact, Chicago, Chicago, their original uh, name for their and they're first English, three right? albums. No, God, no, no, no. Oh, they're are they Chicago. actually from Chicago? Yeah. So the only guy that wasn't from Chicago is Peter Cetera because he's English, right? Uh, that's why it didn't make sense because I no, thought no, the he, whole he, he, when when they lost a. But here's here's the thing: Chicago, when they first started out, their first three albums, they were called CTA, Chicago Transit Authority, based after the that's bus a line. Dumb name. Well, no, that was the, that was just a bus line, um, but they did their first three albums of that, and then they moved into they cu- just cut it down to Chicago and moved forward. So you know, but Chicago is the only group in history to have a number one song on the charts in the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and aughts. Aughts. Two thousand to two thousand nine. Oh, they that's did. What, I didn't even know they, they were. Is Peter Cetera still their uh, lead no, singer? Peter, Peter Cetera left the band when, probably like eighties, late eighties. Yeah, when he did like the Karate Kid, he started going solo and uh, 
he did that Karate Kid song and some other stuff. He was the only reason I I liked them because I he, he had a good uh, like Saturday in the voice. Park. That was Saturday in the Park. I don't was know that song. Satira. Yeah, I don't. I only know this a couple of the songs that he did because you would know I'm Saturday in the Park if you heard it. It's one of the most to, famous uh, uh, songs that is played all the time. You know, whatever. Um, okay, that was Chicago. Now let's take another band. Um, one of the most influential rock bands, American rock bands in history, got in, I believe, in 2014 or 2015. And that was Kiss. Would you consider Kiss rock and roll? I can't stand, uh, what's his name? Uh, well, you don't have to stand. Gene Simmons. You don't have to stand. Him. I know, I know, I know. But I, I, I'm not basing it off of that. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. We're on the radio. I'm making a commentary, but y- <laughs> y- you know, um, I'm Gene, not a fan of Kiss. Gene I don't Simmons like and um, who's the other guy that uh, Peter the guitarist? Chris. Peter Chris. No, no, they're get their guitarist for yeah, Kiss. Peter Chris. Peter Chris. No, that's not who I'm talking about. Um, the the other the most popular guy. Uh, oh. I think he's Jewish too. Um. Even though uh, Gene Simmons was born in Israel, actually, fuck, I can't think of his name. Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley, right, right. So, but yeah, because I I heard him brag about on Howard Stern before about their record sales and their hits and all of this shit. So I know that they've been not only huge in um, you know their uh, hits and stuff like that, but they sold all this fucking merchandise and he. He's all and about they have money. A cult following, and, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, they do. It, they even have a coffin. I, I, no joke. It, it, the, he came on Howard Stern one time, right, to introduce the Kiss coffin. He's like, "It's going to be at the Jacob Javits Center in New York. You can come and buy a Kiss coffin. It's like a real coffin that says uh, it's decorated like Kiss or something. I don't know. So you can take, <laughs> you can go to the. I mean, the shit that he said is just. It was fucked up but funny he's just like you know you can be buried with kiss <laughs> i want gene simmons to like jump in the you know somebody to pay you know how much to have him fucking jump in the in the uh coffin with them and it was funny because they happened at the time to have a gene simmons imitator so they were going back and forth <laughs> about it uh but uh yeah so um yeah aren't they in the, are they not I don't know. Well, they are, but it took 20 plus years for them to get in. And, uh, you know, Public Enemy got in before they did. Yeah, I th- I, you know what? I think that's a, uh, although Public Enemy, if you listen to their old uh, stuff with, that Rick Rubin produced, it has a lot of rock in it, in the beats. Uh, it has a lot of guitar and whatever and you know, it's still rap, but it, it does have a, a rock kind of ish, you know, like the Beastie Boys kind of um, in their early stuff because Rick Rubin produced a lot of it. But but yeah, I think that was more of a, a political, not a political thing, but like a, oh, we're going to put a rap group in to show, you know, by, by the way, put Public that, Enemy in. But Public were- Enemy is, if there was a rap hall of fame, they should be in it. I mean, I, I love Public Enemy, but based on your definition, it, 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 then I would say no. But go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say earlier you had talked about uh, um, you had a, a group called ELP because I had said ELO, Electric Light Orchestra. ELP was Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Well, no, I was thinking of E E L F or something. It was a group that had a one hit wonder. They were a one hit wonder group. Oh no, that was K L F. How about this? Sammy Hagar is not in the uh, um, Rock and Hall of Fame. Not by himself, but Van Halen is. Right, Van Halen is, but Sammy Hagar. I don't know what he's done a, by himself. I remember he did. I can't it, drive fifty five. I know that well, that's one song. I know he did a song for the Footloose soundtrack. That's about uh, all Jethro I know. Tull? Is Jethro not, Tull is, is, I, I don't know enough about them. I know who they are. Um, I don't know what they've done. So, I, again, Ted, I don't know. Ted Nugent? Again, uh, I know who Ted Nugent is, but not for. I don't know him for his music. I know, like, one song that he's done. So, it's hard to to say. 
Um, yeah, but well, let's look at, but let's the, let's the list the is re- kind of ridiculous because these are all people that I haven't. A lot of these are people that I haven't heard. But I, I'm I'm going to look at them both from the it, uh, the only reason they shouldn't be in is because of rock and roll compared to what the fuck are they doing on here? So let's go through the list and then we'll we'll move on to our our, our other stuff. So uh, go go ahead. Do you yeah, want to go uh, through the ELO, list? Electric Light Orchestra. So uh, yeah, I, w- I have no idea who they are. So you know whatever, and and they wouldn't be classified as rock, right? So oh yeah, uh, they would be rock. Oh gosh, I yeah. thought they were an actual orchestra. Say that no, shows no, no, how no, much no, I no, know. No, 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 That's just what they called themselves. And you got to remember, this is this is uh, they were they were uh, huge. I mean, we're talking bigger than the Bee Gees from the 1973 and 1978 period. If it's been that long though, and they haven't fucking got in, you know, so you you, you say okay, 25 years, and that's why Tupac's on there. And I would say, and that was the second one, because his first album came out in 91. It's been like exactly, uh, I think, 25 years, if I'm my math is correct. So, and Tupac would def- should definitely be in a Hall of Fame. Now, if we go by the rock definition that rap group shouldn't be in there, then he shouldn't. But that's already been broken. So can, are you going to put Public Enemy in there but not put Tupac in there? I mean, you can't do that. You can't once you've broken the okay. We're putting basically any group in here. Um, how do you go back? You know what I mean. So to say, Run DMC, Public Enemy, um, those are the two root rap groups that I know of. Beastie Boys, I believe, are in there, but they kind of experimented with rock. They were a punk band before they became a rap group, and they did do right. rock. But stuff. punk, punk is a style of rock, right? But yeah, so. So Beastie Boys is a little different, but I know Public Enemy and Run DMC is in there. Um, so if See, they're let, in there, then some... Tupac should be in there. But I understand your point saying Public Enemy and Run DMC. And Run DMC did the same thing where they did, you know, early rap had a lot of rock in it, had a lot of guitar and shit like that. Now, Tupac didn't. Uh, right. But Run, DM, that, Run DMC did. And so did Public Enemy in their early stuff. I mean, I could play you some and old Public Enemy stuff. that's why I'm not against Public Enemy getting in there. I'm just get against Public Enemy getting in there before a great number of bands who were more, who much better. I mean, Public Enemy. Well, did it's have, it's a it's a matter influence. of taste, though, and opinion. So it's what do you go on? Um, so let's go through the list real quick and then talk about what you go on. And, and um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but we can still we can spend maybe 10 more minutes. So go through the list. And um, sorry. So the second we talked about Tupac and um, so the, keep ne- going. the next one, the next one was a, uh, a little hit disco. They were popular in the disco era. They don't deserve to be here. Chic. I've never heard of them. The Cars. Yes. The, the cars I've Rico heard Kasich, of. Rico Kasich was one of the, the best uh, rock pop singers of the 1980s. And they and say uh, um, out of these, there's only five slots. So they pick five out of this list that we're going through. Right. So the, the cars, I, 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 I guess, I, you know, I wouldn't have a problem. I don't know a lot about cars, but I about cars. I don't know a lot about cars neither. But yeah, I've heard um, some of the car stuff, and I know they were a popular group, so I would say yeah. Yeah, and and frankly, I the cars deserve to get in, but I don't think they deserve to get in. To me, you know, if it's been twenty some odd years, and you put in five per, uh, the cars are not in the top one hundred. The cars are probably in the top one fifty to two hundred. So I would put them in a few years down the road. Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam, like Nirvana. Um, did have a massive influence. Yeah, they did. And Pearl Jam should have been in. They were a while probably ago. second to Nirvana. No, but they just became eligible because they came out right. in like '91 as well. So yeah, I think exactly. this is their first year eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, so you, I, would, I would do Pearl Jam, but you're but you know the grunge the grunge uh, the grunge rock era was about maybe four to five years. That was about it. Well, no, uh, well, part of it was uh, I don't know 
and none of us really know what would have happened with Nirvana and their legacy. You know, they, they have the legacy that they have because Kurt Cobain died. And I saw a documentary on that and, um, you know, it, a really convincing one actually where, and I don't, you know, base just wa- watching one documentary, but that, you know, the suicide may have not been a suicide, um, but that's a whole nother story. But we don't know what would have happened had Nirvana gone on. They could have, you know, they could have been a type of group that they came out with two albums and then we never heard from them again. You right. know, but they did have a huge whether that had happened or not. And you're right. That whole grunge thing, maybe a little longer because I, I was in high school during that time. So I saw it you know, firsthand with kids that were, it totally, I saw the, the huge influence, man, even in how people like dressed and all of that shit. I saw it firsthand, um, how it even affected uh, Massachusetts, you know, the Boston area had, a, and this is out of Seattle. So yeah, it had a huge effect. And, um, of course, by the time, you know, after five years, I was already out of high school, so I don't know how long that went on, but I know that like my brother, who's three years younger than me, him and his f- friends were into all that stuff too. And it was really started by Nirvana and then Pearl Jam and, and those, uh, there's probably a couple other groups as well, uh, that had, uh, started that. Right. Uh, Joan Baez, Joan Baez to me is a folk singer. She's she had from the seventies, right? And the, no, she started in the sixties. In the sixties, well, she was at yeah. Woodstock, wasn't she? Or am I thinking? Uh, she was in that era. Yeah, uh, she had eight gold al- albums, one Grammy, which was a lifetime achievement, and seven Grammy nominations. But to me, her music just wasn't rock. It, it was folk, and I don't put folk music into the rock and roll thing. And you know, this goes back to my opinion. Um, there are so many different Hall of Fames for types of music that they could set, separate this out. Just like I wouldn't put Peter, Paul, and Mary or the Mamas and Papas or any of those those type. So that's just my opinion on that. Shaka do, Khan. Do you know what the, uh, just real quick, what they have numbers besides them? Do you know what those, those mean? Are the, those are the odds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, those so are the odds. that's fine. So, yeah, Shaka Khan is not rock and roll. Um I nope. really don't know how successful they were. I know who they are. I've heard a couple songs by them. I don't know that they her, are. Her. That big. It's not a group. It's not a group. It's her. I thought it was Shaka a group. Khan is, is a female. No, she's female uh, vocalist. She had a really famous song called "I Feel for You." Yeah, I know the song. Is, yeah, it's used all, you know so many places. But as for the rest of that's it, that's like the only it, one I can think song I can think of that she did. Right. MC MC Five. No idea. I've never heard of him. Janet Jackson, um, although there's some rock and roll influence in a co- in some of her uh, music, I wouldn't consider her rock and roll, but I would definitely consider her. I mean, she's a huge star and she's, you know, sold millions of uh, tens of millions of records. Right. But she only had a, she had a limited lifespan, too. Yeah, but it, it, it's not as limited as you think. I mean, she was she at least ten years was was selling, you know, going platinum with almost every album. Then she fell off. But I mean, she had enough of a time where she did become, you know, she reached that kind of megastar status. Now, part of that is because she's part of the Jackson family, um, not the record sales, but I mean, becoming, you know, the superstar sat- status that everybody knows Janet Jackson and they always, you know, she'll continue to kind of be at that, that superstar status because of she's part of the Jackson family. But at the same time, she had a lot of platinum albums. I mean, she was overshadowed by her brother because he'd sell like 10 million albums and she'd sell like five or something. But she had a lot of successful uh, albums because I'm I, I'm a fan somewhat of Janet Jackson and I have a lot of her uh, music. I don't know what to call it now. Records, MP3s, <laughs> CDs, whatever you want to call it. So you know, she, she, see, she's considered the queen of pop. Yeah. And, so, uh, it, but if it wasn't for, 
again, if you're factoring in, you know, well, this isn't rock and roll, then, you know, I understand. Um, but as far now, as now being somebody said, worthy of being in a Hall of Fame, she definitely is. Yeah, exactly. And the thing about it is, is taking a look at some of the uh, uh, commentary on it. Uh, she's got four albums, including Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's Definitive 200 list. So obviously the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame finds her, um, you know, worthy. And so with her background, if the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, does that criteria, then she should get in. Yeah. And, and, um, I think one of her albums sold at least just in the U S was like, quadruple play you know maybe even bigger than that the night her 1993 album i think was called and Janet. she got she got a lot of the benefit because she's what is called the walkman era and uh the mtv era because if you remember mtv in the in the early 80s yeah well she first came they out had, they would play they would play a janet jackson weekend and all you would see over and over and over is every one well, of her mid videos. mid 80s because she first came out in like 86 i believe her first album came out with uh, pleasure principle and um what were the other couple songs that she came out with that one that uh, eddie murphy mentions in raw i don't know if you've ever seen raw the uh what have you done for me lately? <laughs> right. <laughs> Where Eddie Murphy says in Raw, like a girl, girl say that shit to you now. Like, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> I, I guess you now, have to Now the Raw. next one on there. I uh, never heard of it. Sounds like Bradford. a fucking food. I, I don't know. I, I think, it, I think it's a British influence, but, uh, you know, probably it's like, you know, something like nine inch nails or sex pistols. Yeah. I've never heard of them. Yeah. Okay, Yes is a very interesting I've heard because of, but Yes had a lot of influence, but the problem with Yes is is that they've uh, had so many transformations since 1968 and uh, is that they've when gone they through came out? Different- because I heard their yeah. stuff in the 80s. Yeah. Um, no, they came out in 68 with, like with the Kinks. I didn't realize they were that old. Um Yeah, the the Yes album, their most famous one I mean, I mean, obviously, their most famous song is "Owner of a Lonely Heart" that came out. That's in, the uh, one I'm thinking of. That came out in the '80s. Yeah, 1983. But they started in '68. But the problem is, is that they've had 19 different musicians as full time members. You can't really do. What are you going to do? So the original is is sort of you yeah. know gone. The oh, next well, one. the other group that got in was NWA. Uh, yeah. Just to ma- mention, they just got in as well. And again, they should be in a Hall of Fame, but if we're going by, you know, your definition, then they wouldn't fit it. But uh, they they are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame too. Um, See, to me, I would I would have a uh, a rap Hall of Fame, and there's different styles of rap. Obviously, the hip hop would fall into that. Um, uh, you know, serious hard. Uh, you know, it'd be like Eminem. Eminem is not rock and roll. Eminem to me would be considered rap, but it'd be a different genre of rap. Well, I think they should have just a music. I almost look at and see that's the difference. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I almost look at as the Music Hall of Fame, and I know that's not what it is, but that's like how I kind of look at it. True, and but I, if you take I, a look- I understand your point, but you know that I see here. Here's here. Here's the biggest problem with all of these things when you get down to it, and we could probably end it on this versus go through everybody else. Right, um, right. The the fact of the matter is is that each year on television you've got to watch what eight different music things. There's the the country music award ceremony. There's the American music award ceremony. There's the MTV award ceremony. I don't ceremony. watch any They're, of them. It's, MTV shouldn't I, even have awards anymore because they don't even play fucking videos. MTV has become. They should change it to RTV reality tv because that's yeah. what it is it, I, I don't know how a fucking music t- because you i mean you remember um you know kids that are in their early 20s or teen teenagers don't fucking remember this but i remember like i used to watch yo mtv raps all the time you know and they played fucking videos the, you know they had um ed lover and dr dre which was a big fat guy not that dr dre but they would play videos the whole show and I remember when they played fucking videos because it was MTV. 
Now people, you know, they still make videos, but they don't make them for MTV. They make them, you know, to watch on the internet or watch on YouTube or whatever. But it, it it's fucking ridiculous. But yeah, sorry, oh, I, you, I, you were saying um, they have the, all these different award shows, and yeah, they have country music awards, they have hip hop awards, they have the Source Awards, which I don't know if you're familiar by, by with way, Source Magazine, way, Kraft, but it's hip hop. Let, let me give you a thing about Kraftwerk, and this is what's interesting is talk about uh, influencers, but nobody heard of them. Kraftwerk are inarguably the second most influential pop rock group of the last 55 years. That's how far they go they back. They were the first pop act to entirely replace their rhythm section with distinctly synthetic instrumentation. And the first act to use a pulsing synth, synth throb as their unvaried signature. It sounds like the entire uh, eight a electronic sexual, dance music. Uh, shit, it sounds like a porno description or something. <laughs> The entire age of electronic dance music and synth synth based pop derives from their inventions. Now, there's an interesting, um, you know, when you take a look at some of the, like jazz. Jazz has a point where it goes into rock. It's called fusion jazz. Yeah. And there, well, I there mean, were rock none- came from jazz, really, or came from, you know, that type of. Uh, well, you, you, know what the, you know what the big difference between rock and roll? And the music, everything up to before it, the electric guitar. That's the difference. True. That's really the start. But a lot it's of music just the came, same, evolved. Same instruments. No, I know. But, an amplifier. But music evolved and, and stuff came from uh, things like blues and things like that and, and jazz and things evolved from other things. Or, you know, fusion of uh, taking something from one form of music and then taking something from maybe another but i i guess we'll end it with this and and then i'll I'll give you a a chance to to kind of you know give your last uh thoughts it's uh, my issue i guess um i don't so much have an issue with you know being called the rock and roll hall of fame although i think they should just change it to something that includes all music really and then if they want to have, I, I know what you're saying, that there's a country hall of fame and there's whatever. So if they want to have a separate rock and roll hall of fame, because that was the main thing, though, that everybody wanted to get in. You know, it was recognized like people don't re- give the uh, credibility to these other ones like they do the rock and roll hall of fame. And that's the difference. So that's why people want to be in the rock and roll hall of fame. And that's why I think they nominate um other genres because of even though it says what it says but i think it's become essentially the music hall of fame really even though that wasn't the uh original you know mission statement but i guess the issue i have is really how what is the criteria and how do you define it so like like I was saying with football, I mean, you look at stats. I mean, it's it's pretty much, uh, or baseball especially, you know, um, you look at stats. There's not a lot of other things you can look at. I mean, football, I guess you can look at championships as well, um, you know, those type of things. But they're all measurable things. Now, music, you can look at record sales, although now those are irrelevant. So what are you going to do 25 years from now? You know, downloads or, you know, you can't really measure somebody by record well, you sales. Think, you, you, you sort of just answer your question. Okay. Because I'm 48. How old are you, Dave? I don't want to say on air, but I'm, I'm younger than you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll but say the point is, the point I like is, to is say that, I'm 30 on air, but I'm older than that. So, okay. whatever. Which is surprising that you have not heard of music from a lot of these groups. That should tell you something right off the bat. Well, I used because, to watch. It's not because usually most of the groups that are, are listed, I, I've heard of because I watched MTV when I was a kid in the 80s. Right, M- M- MTV was, was jaded because MTV. Well, not in the early 80s. Show- well, they only showed music that was put on video. They well, didn't true. play everything that was out there because well, not I everybody know, put into videos. I know most of this stuff, like you know, Journey, Depeche Mode, Jane's Addiction, Jay Giles Band. Anybody, I've heard of all what? those. Yeah, Stephen I mean, Wolf. You've heard um, of you've heard of the 
Anybody who watched MTV would know the group Madness. The only ones I haven't Our heard of. Ones. Yeah, I haven't heard of ELO. Or, or, uh, I haven't heard of Chic. I haven't heard of uh, MC5, but neither of you. I haven't heard of Craft Wreck. I haven't heard of Bad Brains. I haven't heard of the Zombies. And I've heard of the Zombies. That's it. But, of course, you know, I started listening to I- exclusively hip-hop but when I was 12. So, um the fact that I even know a lot of the groups that I know is is um, you know is all from when I was younger, or watching MTV. And, ju- and just remember, a lot of the music that uh, you know, Journey, Kansas, uh, a lot Journey, of those I know Doobie a Brothers. bunch of songs. I know who yeah, the, Doob- a lot of those, the Doobie a lot Brothers of those came too. out. In, you know, MTV came out in 1982, I believe, and we're talking maybe five or six years before. But there's a big difference because the music of the '80s completely flipped. It was like it was like uh, you know the '70s was rock and roll, Led Zeppelin, uh, Journey, Sticks, all the you know all those Chicago, um, and then all of a sudden there was this little tiny thing. By the way, on, on a side note, you know where disco actually originated from? Uh, people with big afros. No, the underground gay gay clubs in new york city oh nice yeah there was this uh i saw a documentary on it there was a there was a, a dilapidated hotel that uh they would use uh you know because the uh, gays were still in the closet that would just as a matter of fact it was kind of humorous in a sense is the gays use this for their uh um for their underground dance club and a lot of straight people who wanted to, you know, hang out with the gays would go in there to dance because they were playing this disco music. And um, from from some of the documentaries, you know how Woodstock, they showed pictures of people running around naked out on that farm at Woodstock? Well, yeah. this was like Roman Roman uh, orgy debauchery in these places. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Um, so, I, I mean... That, that's that's, that's why disco only lasted about four or five years. <laughs> yeah, that was one of those genres that didn't last too long. I'm getting a little feedback, um, so I don't know if you got headphones on or if you could turn down my sound to you because um, I'm getting a little feedback there. But um, I don't know. So that's pretty much all I got on that. Um, so as we got uh, a lot to talk about, but a- anything else that you want to – Want to say about it? No, right off. No, it, it, I mean it's, it's one of those things that one year and you know a lot of controversy. A lot of people have thoughts on that. Um, I'm I'm a, I guess I'm a uh, what is it? Uh, I'm a music snob. <laughs> I believe each genre should be relegated to its own genre. Um, you know, but my my music is you uh, like to separate out uh, things and uh, classify things and my, my music was sixty eight to about eighty six. That was it. Anything after ninety two, I really don't. Uh, not my cup of tea. And nothing yeah, I'm, today. I'm I mean, kind of get well, it, but I don't listen to it. I'm kind of getting like that in the past. You know, I don't know five, six, seven years where the new hip hop that comes out is like garbage. So most of it, not everything. Well, I'll, I'll still buy new, um, or I'll get them from the library, new, um, whatever you want to call them CDs, I guess, from artists that have been around that I know that are still coming out with music, but the best music they can come out with is Britney Spears, Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. That shit. Then, then you know, forget about it. No, I'm there's, talking there's about nothing. stuff that you wouldn't, he, you know, you wouldn't hear on the radio because it's like, uh, like hardcore hip hop or whatever, or you know, some R and B. Like I, I do actually like Justin Timberlake. Believe it or not, I admit that I, I like Justin Tim. When the beats are produced by Timberland, um, I like Justin Timberlake. I don't know if you know who Timberland is, but he's a producer and rapper. Um, he's produced a lot of people, so. Anyway, um, that was economics. Just, what do you want to What do you want to start yeah. out with? So there's a few different things. Actually, probably a lot of things to talk about. Um, spent a lot more time on that conversation than I wanted to, but that's fine. Um, 
it was something different to talk about, and I thought it was interesting. Uh, the, the, let, let's start with France and, and what they're doing, because from what you had said in um, your podcast, and I actually I ended up fucking falling asleep. It wasn't because your podcast it was because I have no energy anymore. And I went to lay down while I was listening to it on my futon. And then what happens? I fall asleep, um, which I didn't want to do because I didn't want to wake up right before the show and then have to wake up during the show. But anyway, um, from what I understand in France, they're basically just going to, you know, if you don't have a job, they're just going to give you money. Oh, no. If you have a job, they're going to give you money, too. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if you have a job, they're going to give you money, but they're just going to give everybody money whether they have a job or not. And that other European countries are going to follow or doing this too. Well, or no, how- actually, France, France is number th- France is number four on the list. Okay, oh, Canada. So, so is, there's four there's- of them that are already doing. So, what? I guess to start with, um, how many countries? For, well, first of all, what exactly are they doing? And then we'll get into the countries. What they what they're talking about doing is is a basic so has anybody universal. done this yet or is this just what they're talking about? Yeah, uh, there's two that are are in the works for it. Um, one of them failed on a referendum, but they're going to bring the referendum up for the next uh, next year's vote, and that's Norway and Finland are talking about it, uh, seriously talking about it. France is now doing an experiment. They they created the survey. They did a survey of it. And they're going to do an experiment with thirty thousand people, and if it works, then they're going to go ahead and uh, do it with the whole expand population. Expand it to everybody. Okay. So Canada, what... Canada has a province that is doing it. Okay. So what exactly are they doing, or how are they doing? Are, are they all pretty much doing it the same way, Very similar? Uh, well, it's going to be a different amount of money. Um, what it, a lot of this stems from the fact. Okay, what? two reasons. Uh, the first reason is is that. Between forty and sixty percent of the people are already on welfare anyway. Well, first, so you might as well expand it to, to the whole thing. Right. The second so, thing what, is, what exactly are, are 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 they doing though? Like, so are they? If you don't, they're talking have about a, every month giving twenty five hundred dollars to everybody, per family, or two thousand euros at uh, two thousand euros per person, and they're even going to give like six hundred euros for every kid you have. The whole purpose is this, and that's their to economy, everybody. Their economies are in, their economies are in recession. Yeah, Nobody, but is that consumers aren't buying anything, so they got to try to stimulate economic growth by it, giving people money to spend. Right, but is that is that to everybody? To everybody, whether you have a job or not. So is yes. is this enough money? Or, um, with most of the countries, the money they're talking about, or the countries that they're experimenting in. Uh, in France and Canada, is it enough money to live on? Oh yeah, yeah, but you have to spend it. You can't save it. Well, how That's do they know? Like, so how does that work? Well, it, you know, they'll probably give it on a, a debit card, and you got to spend it. And you know, at the end of the thirty days or whatever, if you have any left on it, then they probably just eliminate it. Oh, so it's kind of like they give you a new card. You have or. or or they'll, or they'll erase the deposit on there and then pump another one on there. Can you buy? But gold? it does a number. Can you of buy things. gold with it? I'm sure you could. <laughs> you know, the the point, the, and you know, that's the thing about it is, is buying gold up to a point is also stimulating the economy because you probably could only spend it locally. It wouldn't be recognized elsewhere outside the country. Right. So if you go to a, a coin dealer. And by gold, well, they're paying taxes on it, and they're going to take those coin dealers are going to take the money and go, go buy, you know, grocery shopping and, and gasoline and things like that. So, it's trying to up, it's trying to get the velocity of money going. Right, I understand that they're they're trying to they're trying to stim, stimulate the economy by giving out money, and then they'll spend that money, so that will stimulate the economy. But while they're doing but it that, also has two other, it's going to destroy yep. the economy. Not necessarily. Uh, how not necessarily how, how much more destroyed can the economy be well, anyway what are they giving out the first of all are they giving out euros yeah so how does that because this is what i i was thinking about so i know i know britain's you know getting out which is everybody should get out but 
Um, how does that not like ruin the currency for other con- countries that are, are everybody that's in the European Union uses euros, right? Well, the problem is, is that, like I said, the ECB has already printed so much euros. It's not even funny. The what you know, the, the whole here's 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 the whole, the truth of the matter. The whole thing's a scam. The whole thing is a scam because what is the underlying reason for doing this? One, it's getting everybody on digital money. Two. So the move towards, and we've talked about this, and I did a whole show on it as well, the um, going to a cashless society. Correct. The second thing it does, if you have everybody relying upon the government, you control the people. So they're giving it on in the two, um, you know, in France and Canada where they're doing their, you know, test or whatever you want to call it. They're both doing it on uh, cards, on debit cards or whatever. That Yeah, that, that's the uh, th- that's the plan in France. I'm not sure how it's working in Canada. My guess is they're just putting it into bank accounts or, or whatever. But the ultimate goal is to get everybody on a digital system. And they control the money because that's the thing about one of those debit cards that's run from a, a financial institution is they can freeze it at any time. They right. can take out whatever digital money is in there. They can and, do anything. They can, yeah, exactly. They, they can not only, you know, is there the tracking of every little fucking thing you do? There's, like you said, you, there's the freezing of it. A, there's the if, if you write a blog that they don't like, right? They can take no money from you. They can fine you if they feel like it, and just take the money uh, right out. And there's no way, you know. Now you can hold cash, and they can't do shit. Um, but if were and and I had brought all this up in the in the show I did on it, of course, all the things that people don't think about because on the surface, you know, people think about the convenience and they're ignorant and they don't think about the bad side to it. Just like, you know, the self driving car that can will pull over for the police or, you know, shit like that. Um that they can freeze it if if they feel you committed a crime, which I'm sure as time continues to go on and they run out of, I know they will never run out of laws to pass, but as they become more tyrannical, not just France, but every country, because I'm assuming this is the plan for every country at some point, um, not giving out the money, but the whole cashless thing is, you know, the more laws they write. Um, the more you could be considered a criminal, you know, whether they want to take guns away or whether they want to limit your speech and say, this is hate speech or this is this, and they can automatically fine you or they can automatically say, we're going to shut off your card. Uh, you're a fugitive if you don't show up for court, even though it's a bullshit crime that it shouldn't even be illegal, they could pass all these laws and, and essentially uh, have another way of controlling you where how the fuck you're going to escape and you're not. And, you know, there's just so many things that uh, it gives them the ability to do, along with being able to track every single transaction, which they pretty much do now. But if you use cash... And you don't use a, a store card, then they can't. But that's the only way uh, they can't. But you can do that if you want, currently, but not if they go uh, cashless, obviously. Yeah, and you know this is something that is completely insane because it, the only thing that has kept price inflation from just skyrocketing in every single country, including the United States, has been the fact it's not it's not about monetary expansion. I mean that's the textbook. Um, textbook uh, definition of hyperinflation, expanding the money so it's no longer you know valuable. Um, what they've been able to do is they've been able to keep everything financialized, you know, the Wall Street and the banks, and then out of the general economy. And so, what we've had when they talk about deflation, we've had uh, the velocity of money. Now, do you remember what the velocity of money is? Velocity of money is is a track uh, a tracking mechanism of how many times a single dollar gets passed around in a given period. So, say you work you work for X Y Z company, you get your paycheck. 
you go to the you're on your way home and you stop and get gas okay then the owner of the gas station takes his money goes home and gets groceries and then the uh the grocer then takes the money and buys more product right. to fill his uh, and, and thing. You're, you're talking. How many times does that single dollar get passed around? Are, are you talking the, about just uh, cash, or are you talking about even electronic? Well, it doesn't uh, matter. Transactions. Ca- cash slash currency slash a dollar. Right. Well, they did. They did like fucking uh, tests on dollars before to kind of see like you know, how it's been all over the place, you know, where it had like cocaine residue and had this on it and that on it and whatever. And, um, but that was more just a test to see what was on it. But, but it also yeah, kind of show it, that it, has it, nothing to do with it. No, I, no, no I not. know. But w- what it kind of did was also show how it got passed around to all these people. Um, so it was kind of similar in that sense, but no, I, I know what you're, you're, you're talking about. Yeah, if, if you, I remember you did some uh, studies on drugs and all that. And if you take a look at some of the pictures of like, uh, who was the who was the big drug drug lord uh, for a long Pablo time? Pablo Escobar. Yeah, um, he would have stacks of uh, yeah. of dollars, you know, yep. in the walls and all that. Well, he, he actually if, buried. This is this is a true story, uh, I believe. He buried money, and it was buried for so long that it it like deteriorated and they, they, he couldn't even use it yeah and and see that's the point if you get your if your money's in a savings account and you don't spend it or the money's bricked up and by drug dealers you know billions and billions and billions of dollars see that's the thing is we have 20 trillion dollars in national debt but you know how much actual physical currency there is 1.4 trillion Okay, there's they couldn't they there's not enough currency out there ever printed physical well, currency it, to pay it's off all, the debt. It's all electronic, right? Well, that in the banks, um, with uh, what do you call it, uh, fractional reserve uh, banking, oh, where yeah, they, they create absolutely. money out of nothing. But the, but the point is, is if you've got all this money that's just sitting there, I mean, real money, not not the fractionally reserved. So, right, um, right. This is this is one of the reasons why. Well, depending uh, on how much treasuries. money you're borrowing, they may give you cash. Um, you can get yeah, cash if you, go, if you want to. If you go to a bank and ask for ask for fifty thousand dollars, if you got yeah, that they're much not going to give that to you in cash <laughs> for like a week. They don't have the cash. Right. But here's right. the thing, uh, you know. Think about it. You've got you've got a six hundred billion dollar uh, trade deficit, and you know you've heard about the that okay, China's got one point three trillion in U.S. treasuries, uh, Japan's got nine hundred billion in treasuries, the Middle East and OPEC do for all the oil sales. See, it's not feasible to transmit the dollars back and forth, back and forth. So what they do is they put them in short term uh, bonds, treasuries. And that's what they're they're good they're triple A rated graded credit, uh, so the U S everybody has to accept them. So they say. Now on a on a side note, something uh, Japan I mean China has been doing is China has been recognizing that the dollar is uh, losing confidence. You know it's it used to be about sixty to seventy percent of all global tr- settlement transactions and trade. It's now that's now down to forty two percent. So they've got all these treasuries, and they know that with uh, with the United States de- virtually declaring war on Russia, and China has uh, military agreements with Russia over Syria, that at any time the U.S. could do economic sanctions against China and say we don't recognize your treasuries, we're not going to cash them in. And I think China's been preparing it because they've been dumping treasuries like 900 billion dollars over the past uh 9 to 9 to 12 months and guess what they've been buying with those that money Haven't they've been buying, buying Japanese gold? bonds oh okay How Japanese does, bonds. isn't Japanese don't those have negative interest some of them are negative some of them are not it depends on on well, how far be, oh, what would be the point of of that well, now all of a sudden, you know, there's there's an old axiom that says that the borrower is slave to the lender, and so if China has most of your debt, how long is it before Japan is going to be, you know, at a certain point, willingly divest itself from U.S. hegemony and go over to China because well, maybe China's 
Now think about think about that's what's happening the with the Philippines right now. Exactly, and who else? Turkey. You remember the coup in Turkey, and then afterwards, yeah, you they went in and, uh, uh, that as they well. Went into the base, they went in the military base, and and the U.S. had to move like two hundred or fifty to two hundred nukes out of Ankara base and move it somewhere else. Uh, Saudi Arabia is moving into Russia's so, sphere but, of influence. But before we, we, we get to that, I just want to finish up on this, this thing with uh, France real quick um, and uh, other countries and then um, get to – because the, the what the, the Philippines leader supposedly said, uh, I read an article, he said some uh, some very bad insulting shit. He, he said Obama. some bad insulting shit. He said some. He called. He called him a uh, son of a bitch. Yeah, he, was, uh, he, he said he, uh, something else too. He said some. He was cursing. He he went back. They said he was going back between like uh, Tagalog, I would assume, because they said he went back between his native language and there's a couple languages spoken in the Philippines, but Tagalog is the biggest one and English because they they everybody in the Philippines speaks English as well, but um, right that he was like cursing and you know China's better and China are our friends and Obama's you know a fucking moron or something I mean he didn't say the, that the state just... the, recent recently the state department says every time we try to call him up to talk we have to hang up because he can't stop cursing at us <laughs> that, that was the state the, department the state department said the leader of the Philippines yeah, or oh, they're, they're, okay. trying, they're trying to they're trying to mend fences or whatever. But here's the kicker, of course, the Philippines. Um, you know, you know how China took over some of those islands in the South China Sea that are in dispute. Well, most of them are more into the Philippines section of the South China Sea than than China's section. And the United Nations, a court in the United Nations, said, "Yeah, those are the those are Philippines islands." Well, guess what, Duarte the leader of Philippines, now that he's moving, pivoting into China, is having no problem at all that letting China go ahead and do this. You know why? Because China procured up a $31 billion uh, interest-free loan and said, hey, here you go, help your economy, and by the way, we'll help you rebuild your ports and your infrastructure. Yeah, they're a very is more than poor happy to- country, uh, the Philippines. I've I, I been there, and I know some uh, enough about it. Um, but they're See, the they're a very very poor country. And here and here's the other thing is is Duarte has been shooting executing drug lords. Well, who's one of the biggest drug lords on the Philippine Islands? The CIA. Say, yeah, I was just going to say that. And they've already he's already demanded that the CIA get their get their ass out of town. So. Well, I don't agree with them executing fucking drug lords. I'm sorry. Uh, But, you know, um, so if the Philippines wants to become not that the United States is is much better, to be honest, than than China, Um, you know, it's hard to really measure that because I've. I don't live in China and, you know, I, I don't go through whatever the people there uh, do. So I don't know what their everyday life is like or what, you know, goes on between them and the government. I do obviously know within the United States, you know, I don't know if they have police. Uh, well, I, as far as I know, they don't have, well, they could have police killing people and just burying them and no one finds out about it. Who knows? What, in China? Yeah. But oh, oh! In China, if you're a prisoner, they and you've, you've got a certain level. They'll they'll uh, take all your organs and sell them on the black market. But yeah, that's fucked up. But what the the Philippines is doing, um, and that's the government. So I don't blame the people, but that's totally Look, fucked up. What's going on in the Philippines and has been going on for years is the equivalent of the Brit- what the British did to the Chinese during the Opium Wars. They forced them to get addicted. And so that's where Duarte is saying enough is enough. And I, just, I think just I don't think you can force anybody to get addicted to anything. Um, you make that that's self responsibility. So you you know you can make something very available if you want. That doesn't mean anything 
there's a lot of things that are are you know really bad for you. We talked about uh, high fructose corn does, does syrup big, big pharma, uh, a couple weeks does ago. Does big pharma get people addicted to uh, drugs that are supposed to be like safe for you, like oxycotton and and uh, all those? Hey. The doctor prescribed it to uh, me. It must be safe and good. No, they get it. Well, some people ab- start to abuse them. And I remember when I broke my ankle in 2006 and I took um, painkillers for like four months every day. And then uh, when my ankle was good, I didn't take them anymore. So, you know, um, that was back then. But, um, so I I don't know it, it it's people Look, have enough information to say then I don't want uh, to take painkillers or I don't want to take Look, this and you're and, you're a, yeah but you're in a poor country like the Philippines okay just like China in the 1800s was poor compared to the British Empire uh, you have when when there's there's no future there's no hope there's no nothing yeah they make, well their 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 hope is that for females at least that some American will marry them yeah but uh, no the, the the point is is you know that's the culture has gotten so addicted that he pretty much has had to you know put lay down the law and. You know his approval rating is ninety one percent. So <laughs> well, then, then if if that's true that ninety one percent of the people actually support uh, someone like that, then then fuck them too because um, that's totally to me anti freedom and this whole well because of this. And, and you know what? What percent? You know when 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 people say that, and I did a I did a whole show about perception. So like. In the United States, there's 321 million people, right? That according to the to the U.S. Census, in estimate from like 2014, it was either 2015 or 14, whatever. And then I went to the CDC and got you know how many people died and whatever. But you know, I was looking at something like gun deaths compared to the total, you know, like 2.6 million people died in 2015. And if you don't count suicides, which I don't know how you can, because that's not what I'd consider, you know, yes, they use the gun to commit suicide, but you can use a lot of things to commit suicide as far as the argument to ban guns. And the number was like 12,000 people died from guns. And that includes, you know, whether it's gangs or people with illegal guns or whatever. Uh, although I don't believe there should be any restrictions on guns neither. But um, the point being is that when you put it in perspective, they call things epidemics when, you know, 1% of the population is doing something and then now it's an epidemic. Or they say when, you know, what, 60 police die in a year in the United States that there's a war on cops uh, because two people actually purposely shot at cops it which happens it, you know every year there's a certain amount of people uh a certain amount of cops that die it's usually around the same number so this year i forget the last number i looked at but it won't be more than a hundred i don't even think it's been a hundred ever okay and we're talking about um you know thousands of police officers and it's not even in the top 15 most dangerous jobs. It might be number 15 or 16. Uh, so point being is that people don't put things in perspective. If if on the media every day they just cover, which they do, and, and that's why I call it government media, but if, on the government media, if they cover every day like they do, violence, murder, all of these things, people think that, it, you know, that's what happens to everybody all the time. This place is dangerous. That place is dangerous. So my my point being, I, I can't speak to exactly what, how far things have gone in the Philippines and what the issues are because I haven't really looked into it. But I can say in general, and I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, that people don't put things in perspective they don't look at 
how the percentage of the population compared to what happens or the amount of people that die and the percentage that die from like guns. It's not even 1%. They don't put things in perspective. They look at one or two fucking incidences and say, oh, look, this happens all the fucking time now. And this is an epidemic. And it's not. And, and it's ridiculous. Well, you know, pretty much the the whole drug concept, drug war, and all that. I pretty much stay out of it. But I just look at the fact that uh, well, there's you been did a- say on the on the radio t- or on your podcast today that they should end the drug war. So, oh yeah, yeah, they should um, end, the, end the drug war. But that but that's the United States. I, I you know. The re- the rest of the world, you know what? I really can't speak for them. To well, tell it's the truth. same. It, it's the same thing in the rest of the world because the reason no, because why I can't impose, you know, if you think about it as a libertarian, I can't impose my views on somebody else. I, it's not about want. imposing your views. I'm not telling people what to do. I'm saying my opinion is that the whole. It, it, see, I, I don't get that though. So because you live in America. You can't have an opinion about another country. Is that what? Oh, I can have an opinion. Saying? Well, you know, that's what I'm opinions, saying. Yeah, but it, but it's it, it's when it gets to pro, uh, policy and pro, programs. It's it's the equivalent of like you know. There, there's an interesting thing about it is um, uh, there are a number of major truck uh, truck stops like Flying J or whatever. I'm not sure if it's Flying J, so I'm just. I, I heard, I heard ones, this story, but go ahead and tell it. Yeah, uh, they're, they have now uh, redone their bathrooms. There's a women's bathroom, and then there's a community bathroom. So all the all the males and transgenders and anybody who thinks that they're a man, whether they are or not, go into the men's room. But the women have their own room, you know, and and etc. See, I don't really care if somebody is transgender or, or whatever, yada, 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 but they have imposed their policies, not their right. opinions, but their policies if it's the government. on my livelihood now. Well, so what about this? No, and I agree with you. I, I think that it's up to the business. If the business wants to do that, they they have the right to do that. It's their fucking right. business. If the business does not want to do that, then they shouldn't have to do that. However, how far do you take it? Um, and we'll take a, a break in a minute because we've been talking for like almost an hour and a half. But how far do you take it? So you live in in Arizona, and we'll say the Phoenix area. I don't want to give out the town you live in, but um, well, not that that matters. Not like anyone, whatever. But you live in a, a, in the, the tire town. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah but um it sounds like the entire town but anyway so you live in the state of arizona in a certain city so do you because you live in america then you have you can say that in this state should do this or in this city they should do this or does it just apply to do you think that it applies to the whole country because I'm I'm just saying because from what you're saying is what about other states you know because they have the right to pass. Well, see, I'm, I'm a big believer that the states and the people in the states should determine most of their own own right. things. So that would mean that you're saying that I don't know what you're saying that you, you don't what, have an opinion. For example, for I mean, example, you can't have an opinion about what the policies are in Nevada because you live in Arizona. I could have an opinion, but it really wouldn't be valid. See, there's that's something else. Well, everybody's have, opinion, opinion is valid. Having, that's having not. Opinion, no, maybe that's absolutely true. It, it's it'd be like you. You hate Sh- Sheriff Joe Arpaio. I love him because you know why? Because he trusts the citizens here. Okay, we have two hundred thousand. Well, I, I think he's a criminal. Voluntary people who he trusts enough to carry guns and to go help patrol as as, as deputy sheriff. Well, that I support. So when the stuff hits but... the fan. Here is a police department, the, the the sheriff, you know, the most popular sheriff in the in the country, or at least well, infamous. He's also the least, so it's okay, a double yeah. it's like a double but, edged sword. But here is somebody who's not going to come and take guns. As a matter of fact, he's gonna ask the citizens to help if there's a case of a crisis. Well that I agree with, but I don't agree well, with what? a lot it, of the it, other it, stuff he it, does. Yeah, but you know what? Because because of the fact that in Arizona we removed 
which should be everywhere, we removed. Uh, you don't have to get a license to conceal carry. Yeah, I know, which is a and, is a very Utah, good thing. Utah all of a sudden says, "Oh my God, we can't do reciprocity on that. You can't you can't conceal carry if you if from Arizona and come in here." And you know what? Nevada changed their things too. Uh, the reciprocity. Well, no, they know, they haven't. That, that's where that's where they somebody changed what. State, um, you can conceal carry, but when you enter the state, you have to go to like a police, de- uh, police office or police department, you know, one of the precincts and register that you're going to be traveling through the state. And oh, if you're okay. So, so if you're from Arizona, you're saying you can go and because you don't get a concealed carry permit. We don't have to have a permit. Right. Second that's that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Our, that's what I'm saying. Second, yeah. So the, because you don't get a concealed, per- because normally you would show them your concealed carry permit if it was if it covered Nevada, right? Now, but you don't have one because you don't need one. So I, I you're saying that if you go and register with the police or whatever, right. that it covers you if you're traveling through and you're concealed carrying. Exactly. Now, now, now take this for consideration. What is one of the most gun controlled areas in the country? Chicago, well, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, uh, Boston, California, but, and you and you have liberals in Massachusetts getting on the television, getting upset that somebody in Arizona can conceal carry or buy from a gun show and not have to register it. Okay, see that to me is opinion that's not valid. I don't give a crap a rat's ass. If you're in Massachusetts because you never come to Phoenix and you're trying to now dictate mandate to me what I do in my own state. I agree with you I with would, that. I, but now, if I was to say what I think of Boston and Massachusetts because they don't have gun rights, I really don't feel it's right for me to have an opinion on that because in the end, the people have voted in their legislators who removed their gun rights and they're totally content with it. Well, it's not necessarily true, but they they kind of they brainwash people and push that. But yeah, I have a problem that when other states believe that even though you say, well, they voted them in and that's a whole bunch of bullshit. And, and, and you know it as well. No, who because runs the all fucking, politics is local. You can you can it, change it, your it, local it, it politics is, no. much easier than you can. Who's going to be going easier, to but it's still, it, you know, look at the budget for Phoenix, for example, and look at how much of it is federal money and look at how the federal government is controlling a lot of states. So I, I, I don't believe that those those elections, I believe, are just as rigged as the presidential election. Now, maybe your town selectman, if you live in a town of 20,000 people, uh, and that's about it. And I don't believe that. And at the same time, I don't believe people have the right to take away negative rights. And I'm going to make sure I emphasize negative rights, meaning, you know, uh, the right to defend yourself, the right to um, put whatever you want in your body, the, not the positive rights that the uh, progressives push. But just because they live in another state and, uh, and the majority wants to take away the rights of the minority, they don't have that right. I don't give a fuck if you live in another country. I still don't believe that your country has any say or any right or any authority. I mean, their only authority is a fucking gun. Um, and you did bring up a good point one time where some people, you know, fall into line just because, well, they're getting their welfare check and they don't want to, you know, uh, get in uh, the middle of that, they're like content with, you know, the government giving them all this shit and, and whatever. But when it comes down to it, laws are based on, again, a bunch of men with laws. The enforcement of laws and of authority are based on men with guns. You're right. The enforcement. But most of the laws that, uh, especially the inane ones, okay, the most of the inane ones come from a small, tiny minority of people who had some bad thing happen to them, they screamed loud enough. Right, but and, they're still, and then they, bec- I know, and you, and you, and I agree with you, but what I'm saying is that's even worse. 
because you have a tiny minority that get these laws passed, right? Like, like the drinking, drinking and driving is a perfect example, whether you believe that it should be the way it is or not. And this allowed people, them to even get the Supreme Court to say it's legal to do checkpoints for, for drinking and driving. And if you read the decision, even in the fucking decision, they say that they kind of believe that this does violate your rights, but safety is more important. I'm paraphrasing and I'm kind of summarizing, but that's what the Supreme Court says. That's fucking scary, first of all, because we know that the Constitution doesn't mean shit. What political party or, or political view you have is what matters when you're on the Supreme Court. And, you know, the Supreme Court wasn't even set up for that function in the first place. But the point being is that, like with drinking and driving, it was, you know, a group of mothers or something where, you know, it wasn't that serious in what, the 70s? And then. Yeah, but, not, but the drinking and driving, we'll put that aside. Let's, let's get something a little bit more esoteric. What about the fact of uh, raising the age limit to drink to 21? You know, that didn't happen until the so, middle 80s, early 80s. No, it was before that. Places. No, because I remember I was grandfathered in. When, when well, I where, was did just you, before, where did you live at the time? I was in Arizona. Because in, was, in Mass, uh, as far as I know, it was 21. Right, and and some of the states would have done it on their own, but the I think the federal, majority of them did. But the federal you, law came, in, and here's here's the the thing: you you hit the nail on the head because states are so reliant upon federal money, which uh, the federal government shouldn't be taking taxes and holding it over their heads anyway. I re- I remember, you remember um, when Nevada for like two hours or something like that raised the speed limit on the freeways to seventy five. And they uh, then all of a sudden the, the, the federal, federal government, government says, came in we're going to cut no. your highway funds. Well, you know what they, they did it with, back. too? They did it with the blood alcohol level because Nevada, for the longest time, they, they had it was 0. 0.10. Right. They said, no, we're not going to lower it to 0. 0.08. Um, and then finally, it took a while. Finally, the you know the federal government said, "Well, we're not same thing. We're not going to give you the mo- money for highways or whatever." So then they changed it to point oh eight from point one oh. So that's that's the same with Common Core. It's the same with so many fucking things. So, but either way, no matter how people want to look at it, as far as I'm concerned, the government, I don't like. St- it's like people don't in my and this is my opinion but it's people don't have the right to vote on what i put in my body it's not it's not their decision it's none of no, their fucking no, business but, but the people no they do. they don't no they don't well, the, the government saying? gives them the authority at no, the point no, of a gun no, you're, see, but see you're being hypocritical because people have the right for public safety. Now, what you do in your home, I don't care. And and for the most part, most people don't care. But if you uh, become, you know, to the point of inebriation. That's not what the law is. If you go to inebriation and go out and get in a car and get on a public road, yeah, nine out of ten times you're going to get to your destination. But and we're talking about two different, two different things. You're talking right, but, about but, if you get in your car and drive. I'm, I'm talking about drugs. I'm talking about anything putting in your body. I'm not but talking about putting it in your body and driving. I didn't you say the example. Of, well, we were just talking about the blood alcohol test and driving while intoxicated. That well, well but I'm I'm saying now it, it, I'm basically changing the the see, subject. I'm in agreement with you that people should do whatever they want. As a matter it, fact, whatever I, I want to put in my body, I have the right to put in my body. You don't have the right to tell me what I can put in my body. I'm not talking about driving around. I'm talking just about the ownership of my own body. You do not, you or anybody else does not have ownership of my fucking body or anybody else's. I don't have ownership of your body neither. I don't have the right to tell you what you can do with your body as long as you don't hurt anybody else or endanger anybody else or or attack anybody or fuck with their property. 
once you do that, then you cross that line. But the simple fact of just getting fucked up does not violate any anything that people have a right, as far as I'm concerned, to to have any say in. And on top of that, you know, I didn't choose to fucking be here. I didn't give consent to any of these laws. I didn't consent to the Constitution, any of it. But it's it's pushed and applied on me. And where am I going to go? You know. And well, what yeah, about when I'm under eighteen? But, but see, that's the that's part of, part of it. You know. Let, and let's votes the, don't mean shit. Let's because, take the let's take ahead. the drugs out of it for a second. Okay. Well, I let's just use drugs. that because it's the easiest thing to use. I know, but but let, let's something that that the majority of people have. Say Cuban I, cigars. I think they're legal now, though, um, because I, no, let's bring, let's bring a different yeah, option. Ro, Roe v. Wade was all based on that a woman has the right. Yeah, it's uh, her body. They like to say it's reproductive. Okay, but in reality, woman has the right to uh, decide what goes happens with her body, and it says in reproduction thing. Now let's take it to another step. Why, if that's the case that people have the right to what they put in their body, uh, are they forced to take, you know, for children, vaccines? And not only will some bureaucrat, if you don't. don't do vaccines, they'll take you to court to force them out on the air. Yeah, they you don't. You can't go to school. I know. See, if what, you don't do that. You, they that's, don't have the right. What, what I'm saying. It's far more important they, to than than you know say worrying about some illicit drugs they they, they don't make. they don't have the what i'm talking about is actual what i believe rights are and what the government says they are so i'm saying what i believe rights are and what i believe rights are the government violates rights on a daily basis with probably 80 percent of their fucking laws True, and that you violates that. the vaccine thing sorry, sorry to interrupt but the the vaccine thing does violate people's rights. Now, they can say it's a law, so it doesn't violate people's rights, but it does, and it violates their rights at the barrel of a fucking gun. Because when it comes down to it, if you don't send that kid to school, now, I guess you could homeschool them and say for religious reasons, and you could get around it that way. So it's not really a law that you have to take a vaccine. There are ways to get around it. Here's the whole point of it, too. Okay. Uh, we always say the government this, the government this. You know, the government, all it's made up of, of men, men and women. It's made of people. It's made, it's of, made people. up of elite people, most. Well, the majority yeah, of them. But most and of the, the people that the are running it are mostly elite. True, but, but you know, take, take for example, what's going on with the FBI. Okay. James Comey is as much a, a bought and paid for shill as it comes. That's why he didn't bring any charges against Hillary Clinton. But do you I know, think what F- happened uh, r- real quick? Uh, and I don't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to so we can have a comparison here. Remember uh, General Petraeus and what right. he did wasn't even as bad. Did, oh, he, yeah. did he end up going to jail or not? What was the no, punishment? No, for he him? signed off. He signed off and took a plea deal. Right. He lost his he lost his clearance and yeah I know he lost his job right. so so what he did and I and I don't you know to be honest I don't believe that in the context of things it, it's all bullshit to me because it, it's well this is classified information and what I, I, whatever because I don't believe in the whole fucking government structure anyway but. Just you know, the hypocrisy is what I criticize. Oh, I, so I, I'm in full. I'm in full this, agreement. This is hypocrisy. Is is the only reason why I because I don't talk about the Hillary email thing because I don't give a fuck. No, but, here's, here's but, the but point. The, there's hypocrisy here. But go ahead and w- with your point because I kind of yeah, interrupted there's, there's you hypocrisy, there. But, so you had him who who got punished for something that wasn't even as wor- bad, but, and but her punishment. she gets off. But see, enforcement is a, enforcement is a political decision by men. Right, it's here's, by the uh, but here's, district attorney. Here's the point usually. James Comey was uh, a rep, uh, on the board of HSBC at the time that Bill Clinton was president, and uh, it was all you know he he uh, did did a whole bunch of corruption in that that was involved in this, and at that point, Comey became bought and paid for. In, by the Clintons, by the Clinton machine. Now, here's the thing, okay? 
And I know you hate cops and, and this, that. But you know what? Do, do you think every single I, I don't hate them, but uh, I believe they're all criminals, yes. But I want, but I want you to, to look at it from an open mind for a moment. Not a not personal, but an open mind. I do. I, do I, you, I have do a rationale think, that all okay. cops are criminals. And I can explain think, why, but go ahead. Do you think every single FBI agent is inherently evil? No. Okay. Hold on to that premise. Do you think that a number of FBI agents who spent years investigating and wanting to do justice to the best of their ability, do you think those guys were pissed off beyond belief when Comey gave didn't indict her? Um, I'm sure some of them were. Now, where do you think a lot of these WikiLeaks disseminations are coming from? Uh, the guy who got shot in the back. Well, the a number. Well, yeah, Seth Rich did the DNC ones, but a lot of this that's coming out, the Podesta emails, whatever. There is a lot of uh, of evidence mounting that a number of FBI agents who were totally pissed that Hillary Clinton didn't get indicted is leaking this stuff to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, and that's why it's getting coming out. But if you think of it, the, that's not being good. They're no, not well, doing it to be good. They're doing it. I'm fine with them doing it, but I'm saying the reason why they're doing it is, you know, it's like payback. It's they're pissed off, but which, what my which, point, which doesn't make them good. No, 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 no. The action isn't good, but these are people who want to see justice and well, they realize I, I that think they're just pissed off. OK, either way. But here's the point. These individuals who are bureaucrats, who are part of the system. They could have just ignored it, gone on, cut their paycheck, and gotten their pensions. But they were willing to do something to let the American people know that there's fraud, corruption, and these are people who would do it. We all have, we all work in different different locations, different things around the country. If these people, you know, think about what Obama's done to any whistleblower. We've got one who who's hiding out in russia we've got another who's hiding out in an ecuadorian embassy and we, we got, got one, one who's in uh, says jail just got shot yeah another one who's shot okay so if you're if you're a whistleblower you got a lot that's, uh, all of them have been attacked all of them at, at minimum have been fired slandered in the media threatened with jail threatened with arrest you have bradley manning or Chelsea Manning, Manning uh, who's serving, what, 20 years, 30 years in jail for letting people know the truth of what the U.S. was doing. There are but you see some my good. Point. But they, right. They, and if it, the FBI, it, if an FBI not agent. Every is fucking a person is, is bad. I, and I've never said every fucking person is bad. The majority of them are, and the majority of them don't go far enough. And it doesn't necessarily even mean they're bad. It's just. They're, they have a warped sense of reality, or they, at least in my maybe, opinion, they over, could say I have a warped time. sense of reality. But Yeah, but think, think about it. Have you, have you ever worked in a bureaucracy? Well, every corporation I work for is a fucking okay. bureaucracy. I worked, in, I worked in the military. That's massive bureaucracy. Yeah, I it's, it's the not the, the same thing. But I work, for, I work for a city municipality. Massive bureaucracy, okay? A bunch of lifers who don't really care about accomplishing anything. They just want to protect their power struggles and, and you know get them to as high a position they can before they retire and get their paycheck. Okay, That's a bureaucracy. Now, how many people in the bureaucracy are willing to put their, their thing on the, on the line? The reason I say this okay, is because if you have people who, who with the threat of jail or having to leave if, they're, if it found out that they were the doing it, are trying to let the American people know that what's going on to me, then it's up to then the American people to then take that information and force change out there. How many people do you really think in America are willing to go what it takes to force change to bring about the freedoms that you were talking about that we've lost over the course of you know the last well, I, 80 years I don't think or they more. really ex- ever existed in and I mean there was always levels of freedom so right. there's a, well, there's a yeah. lower level of freedom now than there ever was um and I guess it depends how you look at it because you know when the 
country was established, of course, you had a bunch of people who had no rights. But, you know, within the context of uh, what we're talking about, that, yes, over the years, it, it's been a long term goal. And I think it's a long term goal or sometimes short term goal because some governments take over right away. Governments are there. They're about they're like businesses, they're organizations that they're there to control as much as possible. And that's what I believe the purpose of a government is um, and the goal of a government is nothing else. I, re- I remember I just remember what Ben Franklin said when the woman asked him, what, what, what did you give us? What kind of government? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. The expectation was is that men are evil, they're corrupt, and over time, know, greed, and, and right. that will do that. And, and, and if the said people that before, but... didn't hold them to the fire, which people didn't do, <laughs> do. think about this, too. Think about this, too. World War II. I, but there's I never you know. enough freedom in the first place. If you okay. don't have something that, if you're telling me, now, I people can argue, I believe, and no one ever has, that the Ninth Amendment covers... A lot of this shit that they say is illegal, like drugs, like the Ninth Amendment, in my opinion, um, could possibly. Now, I don't know if this was their intention, but I believe it was that the Ninth Amendment is uh, something that basically covers all of this other shit that you have the right to do as long as you don't hurt anybody else. Because yeah, the Tenth, the tenth Amendment. Well, the 10th Amendment is about the states, but the 9th Amendment... What what is not dedicated to the federal government in writing, the federal government should not be dealing with at all, and it's up to the states to do it. Fine, but before that is the 9th Amendment, just like you have, you know, freedom of speech and you have specific rights, you have an amendment that gives you, basically, just because we didn't say you don't have the right to do drugs or put what you want in your body or the right to defend yourself, although it does say you have the right to, uh, it kind of does say that in the Second Amendment. But anything that we didn't put in there that are freedoms, which I believe that uh, r- true freedom is you can do whatever you want as long as you don't you know, affect somebody else's freedom and kill somebody or their property or whatever, that the Ninth Amendment, in other words, says that um, nobody ever mentions the ninth amendment because they don't want to deal with the reality of what it might mean. But to me, that's what it means. And it was before the 10th amendment for a reason. Now, I don't know if they put them in particular order, but before the States have the right to push things on you, they don't have the right to violate your natural rights. And the ninth amendment to me says, you know, and it's totally paraphrasing because that's not exactly what it says. It's too open, but it basically says just because we didn't say you have the right to do this does not mean that you don't have the right to do this. And right. you could say that if there was no freedom of speech amendment, you could say, well, we have freedom of speech based on the Ninth Amendment because based on all of the sayings and writings and even Washington – now, this is I got from Larkin, a quote from uh, Larkin Rose, uh, not his quote, but Washington's quote, that Washington thought that the people should have a bigger uh, army, basically, or a bigger weapons uh, uh, collection than the government. Because that would give you an actual check and balance. You'd have you'd have a real check and balance because if the government got out of hand, they'd know that, oh, the people are armed, so we're going to make sure that we don't violate their rights. But- by, by the way, by the way, something interesting, something interesting. Bill of Rights, um, a little known court case in 1833, the Supreme Court versus held in Barron versus Baltimore. That the Bill of Rights was enforceable by the federal courts only against the federal government and not against the states. So the Bill of Rights does not hold so the, sway that the state can violate states. your rights. Yeah. Yes. So only the federal government can't violate your rights, but it's okay for the states too. Bingo. Which is fucking insane. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about this last week and. I'm going to lose my voice if I keep going on. Um, 
and we never uh, got to it, but there's so much going on with gold. Um, so if you could yeah, talk a little some, about that, if you want to, uh, I'll, I'll go through some of them real quick. Yeah. And one of them, um, I know there was just Sharia law. There was, uh, the sales tax, removing sales tax and a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the first one we'll do, uh, there is a international body that deals with finance and Sharia law for Muslims all around the world. So wait, wait, wait. Course, J- just so I, I understand this, because it actually sounds interesting. So there's an international Muslim. It, it's a Muslim body or like, what do you well, mean sure. exactly? So well, it's, it's like, it's like, uh, think about this. When, when the Muslims go on uh, a pilgrimage, all Muslims around the world go to a single, single spot. They go to Mecca. Okay. Right. The, the, leader of Saudi Arabia, the king of Saudi Arabia, is considered to be the keeper of the Islamic faith, even whether he's anointed or not, because the fact that Mecca because is Mecca's in, in Saudi, Arabia? Saudi Arabia. That's right kind now. of fucked yeah. up, but okay. But, of course, we know over, over the course of Islam, many different sects, many different beliefs in this right. and that. But and they it's still, over they still dumb hold- shit. It, it, I, I forget the exact difference between the Sharia and the, the Shiites, not Sharia, the Shiites and the Sunnis. It was, it, it was over something about Muhammad. It was so stupid. Yeah, anyway. one, one believes that Muhammad uh, went to heaven from Jerusalem, and another believes that he went from Mecca. And it, it, there's a lot there of there was something you know. about descendants, like to it, it's just really dumb, and they're having wars over it. But you know, uh, Christians have had wars over dumb shit too. So, mm-hmm. but uh, go ahead. Okay. But so um, so yeah. So, so anyway. there, there's a body that uh, a Muslim body that regulates sharia law or what exactly right. and, and see here, here's the here's the thing with sharia law sharia law says that muslims cannot charge interest on loans or on money okay they get around this by you so know they can't work spurious. for a bank well what if they're it's not their money like can they work right. for a bank if they you know they're not lending out their money it's the bank's money well anything to do with interest so here's no the thing. but yeah so does it apply personally or does it apply like if you're involved you know what i mean Cause um, like i said at a bank it's not your if, if you give out home loans right at a bank it's not right. your money so you're not charging it the no, bank but say, is. say you have a savings account in a bank and the bank tr- gives you interest you can't take it you can't put well your that's money not in that charging bank. it it doesn't matter about charging it. it you can't has receive to do with it interest either? at all. Oh, okay, so you can't receive it or charge it. Right. So the big thing has been this too. Um, according to current Sharia law, well, they don't have practice, to worry about that anymore when it comes to putting your money in a bank because you're not getting any fucking interest. Uh, true. Um, but anyway, they, they get around that from another different ways. Anyway, the um, the Sharia law when it comes to gold is gold is a currency, a form of money, and you can have some for jewelry. But you can't invest in it as uh, a commodity until this new body. Because here's the thing. Because you can make money off it, is that why? Because in, in today's world, you can either buy like gold, which, you know, is, a, is an option, or you can buy derivatives, you can buy ETFs, but the ETFs are based on profit mechanism and, and interest. Well, that, that's what and, I mean. Like gold will, you know, the price will go up and you'll make money off it. Is that the rationale or like what is correct. the rationale? Right. It, okay, so they can yeah, make money off it. Holding it as an investment. Because it's, an, it's an, an investment. Okay. So they can't, yeah. they, they can't make any investments that are going to make them money. Yeah, Exactly. Like, you know, they, they hold they hold the consideration too. of interest bearing and profit making. Now, if you have a business and you make profit on, on selling goods, that's completely different. Um, it's it deals with investment. As long as you're okay. not making money off money. So like they consider that that would be making money off an in, uh, a money investment kind of. Right. Plus the fact, like I said, they couldn't own gold bullion 
or coins unless it was actually currency. They were, see, in the past, uh, the Islamic world, for the most part, used gold as money. So what's the point in investing in it? You're not going to buy money to buy money. Right. It's only when it's only when we, everybody went off the gold standard that gold became a commodity and an investment. And they Sharia law came down and said you shall not, you know, invest in paper, uh, interest bearing things. Well, that's changing, and so you have upwards. Not 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 all Muslims use uh, follow Sharia law. As a matter of fact, a lot of Muslims don't follow Sharia law, like here in America. And they invest in the stock market or or whatever anyway. Doesn't matter. But it's in like Indonesia, Philippines, um, Qatar, those places that are strict Sharia law countries, you now have upward of about four hundred million people who will soon be open to buying gold. And the significance of that, of course, is, is it's going to drive supply and demand, which is already tight, and it's going to drive prices up once that gets proved. And they're doing the testing period in November, and by the end of the year, they want it to go into law. So what made them change their mind on that? Who knows? If you remember in the 60s, Vatican II came out. Because so many people were leaving the church, they changed the rules just so they could get people butts in the pews. So they allowed uh, people to molest kids so they could uh, get people to join? They've been molesting kids for centuries. Doesn't matter. No, this was, this no, was, uh, this was like uh, they used to do, instead of the hymns and the kneeling during mass and, and all that, they made it so you could just sit in the pews and you listen to folk music. <laughs> Oh, sounds fun. So uh, another thing that was uh, on gold, and, and some states don't do this already, because I'm assuming you're talking about state sales tax, right? That um, that there's right. a federal uh, bill that states won't be able to charge. Uh, no, this isn't a federal bill. This is a state bill. Oh, it's a state? In what state? Yeah. Oh, because some Kentucky. some some um, states already have this. Some and, states and, do, and you can buy it online with no sales tax anyway, because it comes under that same law that if you're if you don't have a physical location, you don't have to pay taxes on it. Right. See, here's the thing: there are there are currently four states that either recognize gold and silver as money, have a depository, or are in the process of doing well, that, and ne- that's Texas, Nevada, you Utah. Gotta pay- got to pay taxes oh that's fine no it's not but no <laughs> it's, no it's not well, fine no, for me no i don't i i don't <laughs> say right off if those states do it but what i'm saying is is that they're recognizing gold and silver as money okay, okay so sorry you were saying the four states uh, texas utah texas utah oklahoma and arizona has has submitted a bill but it's been shot down by our current mayor who's an who's a, a neocon so well, what does it mean that they recognize it as money? Does that mean they can walk into a store and like that means it's it? the first you... step, the first step towards having a monetary system in the states in case the dollar collapses. OK, ah, okay. these states are preparing for a dollar collapse. Texas and Utah have this. They have in Texas. It's a public depository. In uh, Utah, it's a private depository that works with the uh, the state government. People can take their fiat currency, their dollars, they can buy gold at the depository, and they can treat it as a bank account. So they can write checks on it, they can uh, take take money or gold out, but their money is stored in gold. Ah, uh, okay. So you are introducing, reintroducing a gold standard at right. the state level. Well, that's uh, that's a and positive Kentucky thing. Is doing the first thing by they want people. To see, the problem is 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 getting that, people that's to the, the state you were referring to in your article, or right the, that the bill in Kentucky or something, right? Right, and and it's uh, it's been tabled until early uh, 2017. But here's the thing: we have we have gone two generations in America where they don't understand that gold is money. Or silver is money. Okay, we've been on fiat currency system since 71. Right. So you have to reintroduce the fact of gold as money to people, and then they can recognize that it's used as money. 
And if you take away sales tax, then you're giving an incentive for people to start buying right. gold it and makes, silver. It makes no so, sense to charge sales tax when you're exchanging your fucking money. Because that's really exactly. what you're doing. And once but, people but you, start you know buying, what they do? owning gold and silver, then you can start introducing it as right. a monetary system. In Nevada, what they do is if it's an actual coin, this makes no sense. It should be the other way around. But if it's a coin, you know, that's actually, say, a, the U.S. minted a coin, a gold coin like they do, you're charged a sales tax on it. If it's a... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, I had a bunch of them. It's not an actual coin, but it's shaped like a coin, and it has you know it's an a round. On it. It's, they're called round, rounds. right? Right. The, it, round um, is what I was looking for, and for some reason I couldn't think of it. Yeah. So on the rounds, you can buy those without sales tax. There's no sales tax on the rounds, but there's sales tax on the coins, which really doesn't make any sense because no, you think it, it should be the other way around. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny in, in Nevada. There was a uh, – this actually happened about four, four or five years ago. There was a company that decided that they were going to pay their employees in gold and silver, not in a paycheck. Um, they would give the equivalent amount of gold and silver, and then they'd uh, give them time off to go cash it in at the local coin store, which was nearby. Well, what, what's the significance on it? What's the denomination – on a gold coin, fifty dollars. Right. What's the denomination on a silver on a silver coin? One dollar. So what they were doing is they on an ounce. Say you get a paycheck of two thousand two thousand dollars a month. That's on an they ounce. Give the though, if it's if it's right. uh, less than an ounce, then it's you know split up. But like a half ounce would be twenty five bucks of gold. Exactly. And whatever. So what they would do is say you got two thousand dollars a month for for pay. They would give an ounce of gold and maybe a half ounce of gold and then a number of silver, okay? Well, what they were doing is on their payroll taxes, they were saying that they were only paying the employees uh, what, 50 70 about $110 instead of $2,000 currency. So they were uh, getting away with having to pay exorbitant amount of Social Security and yada, yada, yada. So federal government took them to court. And they said, um, what does the Constitution say about uh, money? And the court took a look and they said, uh, if this is minted from the U.S. Mint, why is there a a numeric denomination on this coin? And the courts ruled in in the the business's favor. Because gold from the mint with a dollar denomination on it is considered money. You would think – yeah, so you know, at, at a certain point, that's that's an interesting way to go. Is you can cut down a lot of your business expenses by paying your employees in the equivalent fiat amount of gold and silver. There you go. Because I'll, it I'll is take that. money, and and you know what? There's going to be a certain time they they're going to do in Bitcoin because it's got a value of money. Now, Bitcoin is not recognized as a sovereign currency. But it's kind of interesting because a story we didn't get to, but uh, I'll stay over if you want to run another half hour. Um, the euro may be on its way out in Europe. Three days ago, the co-founder, one of the, the architects back in 1999 who created the euro currency, uh, uh, came out and did a speech where he said, The Eurozone is a ticking time bomb that will explode sooner or later, said one of the founders of the single currency and the chief architect of the the euro. Uh, He said that um, it is realistically, it will be a case of muddling through, struggling from one crisis to the next. It is difficult to forecast how long, but it cannot go on endlessly. He He is forecasting the euro being gone. Well, two days after this architect came out and said that the euro's days are numbered, all of a sudden, the ECB started going after Bitcoin, and they're going to try to try to regulate um, regulate Bitcoin because they fear that as the euro starts collapsing, which has now gone down to one hundred below one hundred nine, it's almost back to parity. Uh, the euro could collapse, especially if Deutsche Bank or the Italian banks go, 
and people will all of a sudden rush to Bitcoin instead of to, say, like a sovereign currency that their local central banks can go. So Bitcoin could finally meet its critical mass. What What is going on now with uh, Deutsche Bank? I know that's been in the uh, – you've had that in a bunch of stories recently. Yeah, Deutsche, and- Deutsche Bank is, is insolvent. They've got a market cap of about seventeen point five billion dollars, and they've got this fine by the by the Department of Justice of fourteen billion dollars over their head. But even more, they have seventy trillion dollars in uh, in derivatives. And just today, uh, the Bank of England told uh, all of its all of its British banks to start doing an audit to see how much exposure they may have to Deutsche Bank and Deutsche Bank's derivative books. So the Bank of England is predicting that Deutsche Bank is going to going to implode here pretty soon. And he wants to make sure that the British banks don't have any exposure at all or it's going to be a domino effect right through the eurozone. Um the other one one last uh thing I wanted to talk about uh before we go uh that could turn into a long conversation but the you had a story regarding Obamacare and insurance in general. Now, one of the things before you get to that, I, I wanted to also mention um, that this is not just affecting the people that go to the stupid. Uh, what do they call them? Exchanges. Exchanges. Yeah, this has affected work insurance as well. Sure. So people think that, oh, yeah, it's great. We get insurance. And I know um, I think your story is about the premiums going up and whatever, but we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, because, you know, we're at our open enrollment point now, which is usually I think for most people around the same time every year, you know, the end of October and November. And you only get like a couple weeks. The way they set it up is very strange. And it. it it, I believe it has to do with the insurance companies as far as how they set up the open enrollment and then you can't go back. And it's just, it's like it's a, the insurance companies need to know what their income is going to be to forecast yeah, here's, it. Here's, and, the, here's the thing. Um, when Obamacare came out, there were a number, probably about uh, 40% of the states had their own exchanges. The exchanges were um, underwriting, underwritten by insurance companies like United Health or Blue Cross or whatever. But over time, uh, all because Obamacare did not pay what uh, they promised, the government promised to do to supplement this, a lot of these uh, underwriters, these insurance companies, started losing hundreds of millions of dollars. So they pulled they out pulled of... Out, right. Right. But and so, but, but before of- but, but before we finish that, I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt, but because uh, I I just want to um, make sure I, I get the the thing out about just work um, insurance because that's what I was talking about with the open enrollment for the work insurance. So I don't want to I, I didn't want to confuse people, but what what I was going to say was now they have so and I think everybody has this. They set them up like how Obamacare did with bronze and gold and silver and platinum or whatever plans. And the fucking deductibles have gone through the fucking roof. It's ridiculous now of how much I'm saying for it work. If you have a job and you get your insurance through work, the the, the deductibles it's because of Obamacare. Yeah, it no, I know. These insurance companies to lose right, so much money that, they that now to, they're right. having to get more money from people not in Obamacare, but who would get their normal right. Uh, well, that, that's job. what that's what I was getting to. That I, I know that because of Obamacare, it has made insurance worse for everybody, not just the exchangers. And 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 I'll let you you know finish. But I know you were saying that. Um, a lot of these companies, because they are losing money, are dropping out of the exchanges. And then um, I interrupted, yeah, so I'm sorry, not, so not go like ahead. That. Yeah, they've dropped out of the exchanges, and, and not only that, many of them have pulled completely out of locations. So, for example, there are there are counties in like Arizona. states or whatever? Or well, some states, but there are counties in Arizona that have no insurance uh, underwriter. So do they None. do it by county? Is that... 
Well, I mean, how, like in say, Arizona, say like have, how is it set up? Say like we have Blue Cross that works in Arizona. Okay, Blue Cross pulled out of doing any coverage for a number of different counties because it was they were losing money in it, even with Obamacare. Now, now here's the thing. Okay, uh, the Obamacare premiums that are run through these insurers are going to jump up at a minimum for everybody who's involved in Obamacare or has insurance through an Obamacare provider. It's going to, premiums are going to go up 25%. But in places like Philadelphia, where they have limited carriers, limited uh, providers, Philadelphia, the city is going to go up 53% in premiums. And there's, I've heard there's some counties in Texas that are going to go up 92%. That's crazy. And people are going to say, fuck it, I'm not going to get insurance. But that's not the worst. Here's Where's the affordable health care? It was called, a lot of people don't even know, because they did like one of those things where a guy went out and asked people, you know, uh, do you like Obamacare? And they said, do you like the Affordable Care Act? It was called the Affordable Care Act, and people just called it Obamacare. It's obviously not affordable. The Patriot Act did exactly the opposite. It was right. the, uh, you know, but here's the, here's the kicker. Okay. These are for people, you know, the Obamacare is for people who are working and whatever, you know, poor. But how about those who are on fixed incomes like retirees? Well, here's the kicker. Medicare premiums are going to go up 22%. Well, isn't it also not just that, but I don't know if it was, I believe it was from you that you talked about that there's a new process for doctors of what they have to do to get reimbursed for Medicare. Yeah, there's um, a new there's a new uh, federal it's not government even worth program it. that means that the doctor has to submit um, reports to the federal right. government to get paid for Medicare. Yeah, like and detailed those, reports of tests and all this shit. Of right? tests that they don't need, but they have to do them anyway and it's going to add about 14 and 14 and a half hours per week or per month to the doctors already and they might just not so they can get, get paid for medicare and they might not even get paid or they might not get paid that much because if they miss something they might say well you didn't include this so uh you have to either redo it or we're not going to pay you and it's going to delay probably the payment the payment time so that's money that you don't have while you're waiting for the fucking government to pay you so yeah people are gonna say we're not gonna take medicare so and and here's the here's the thing one of my doctors have already done did that a couple years ago when obamacare started um a couple months into it they stopped taking medicare because they're like we don't want to deal with this shit and and here's the here's the kicker the whole thing uh, the 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 alternative media saw it for what it was from the very beginning. They said this thing was set to fail, so that yeah, so they could put in fails, single payer, single payer. Now, do you remember a guy named uh, Gruber? He uh, was a, uh, a like a Yale or Harvard um, PhD who was involved in the process. Was this he the guy was, who came out and actually admitted it for what it was and said exactly. that that was let, their plan? Get, yeah. Here's what he said a couple of years ago. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage, Gruber said. And basically, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever, but basically that was really, really critical for the thing to pass. So they lied about it. He admits they lied about it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have passed. Now is what he said after the premiums are going to go up by 25%. This is what he said today. If the CBO, the Congressional budget office scored the individual mandate as taxes the bill dies so had had they you know called it a tax it wouldn't have gone through right and that's what they Um, labeled it when it went through the supreme court oh this is a tax right now here's but it it had already passed so it was it was beyond thing now is what he said today consumers will be faced this year with not only big premium increases but also with a declining number of insurers participating and that will lead to a tumultuous tumultuous open enrollment period so what he's saying is, is that, hey, it's working exactly as we said it would. Oh, here's also what he said. Look, once again, there is no sense of just what has a uh, sense of just what has to be fixed. The law is working as designed. 
Gruber told CNN. However, it could work better, and I think the most important thing experts would agree on is that we need a larger mandate penalty. Well, so it, those it, who- it actually is going up pretty high. If you look at over, because I looked at it over the years, and um, it it goes up pretty high. It's a percentage of income or a certain amount or whichever is more. And, right. and, but you, but and you it pay, was in the thousands. Like no, but it was like in the thousands. It, it, it went up to one year like, geez, I, I swear I, I, I thought uh, it. I saw like five thousand or something like that. At yeah, some but point. some people. But but when you when you think about it, some families are paying like three thousand dollars a month for insurance for their families. Yeah, that's crazy. And and when you can pay like two or three thousand dollars once a year to for the penalty, well, you don't file your taxes and you say fuck you to the government. And if enough people did that, instead of paying for all this shit that uh, they shouldn't be paying for. Then you know what are they going to do? They're going to put half the country in jail. No, but, but here, that, here's, that's never going to happen. This is the key point: the law is working as designed, which right. means that he right. knew it was supposed to fail. No, no, I understand. And the whole purpose is to bring about a government-run healthcare system. Single right, parent. and look, look who's probably going to become president: the person who came up with the Killer idea. Care. Right, who came up with that back when Bill Clinton was president, who came up with a single-payer system. And, you know, Obama fucking even said, this is how much of a, you know, we all know politicians are liars. I can't believe they actually go around asking people, do you trust this politician? Why would you even ask that question? Anyway, he said, well, my difference between Hillary's plan is mine's not a mandate. Um, But he... You know, of course, wanted the same thing as well, but he knew that he wouldn't get it. But, yeah, she's going to come in, and I think that she's uh, the pick of the powers that be, and I think she has been since Obama became president. And that little meeting where all of a sudden Obama disappeared one day during the weekend of Bilderberg on in Virginia that year, and he was supposed to be meeting with Hillary, and it was, okay, Obama's going to be the next president. You're going to, you know, uh, cause she could have fought a couple States, uh, during the primary. There were, there were some, something that went on with Florida and Michigan, I think. So she could have done that, but she didn't. But I think it was, well, you're be, he'll be the president and then you'll be the president. Now she's going to come in and save, uh, the healthcare system by going to the only option, to cut the cost and having a single payer system, which also, which the, it has kind of done this now as well, which will say, Hey, you know what? I get to control what you eat or I should have control of what you eat because I have to pay uh, higher insurance, insurance and premiums. If you eat this food or you don't do this or uh, you'll have because I've heard people say that on the radio already. People that called in and said, um, "Well, if we have you know insurance that everybody pays for, then you know people shouldn't be doing this and doing that. And if you go to a single payer, it's going to get even worse. That people are going to think that hey, I have a right to tell you how to live your life because it affects my insurance premiums." So I agree. they're going to say that they own your body now because, oh, if you do drugs, my insurance premiums go up. If you eat this way, my insurance premiums go up. So we all own each other's bodies now. There you go. So, yeah, it, 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 I don't know. I was going to say I should jump out my window, but I only have two floors, so it really won't do anything. Um, so... I don't know. Anything else on that before we wrap uh, no, it but up? One, one real quick thing I'll do. Sure. Um, there was a banker who's uh, one of the big uh, uh, um, campaign donators to uh, Hillary Clinton. As a matter of fact, he's the uh, chief operating officer of the of one of the largest uh, hedge funds Didn't in the world. Didn't you say uh, Blackstone? Yeah, Blackstone. And you got, uh, and don't say this on the air, but you got my message regarding them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't want to say that on the air, but yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he, he donate, donate so much money to Hillary's campaign. He's known in the, in the 
emails as a hill blazer. What's his well, na- What's his name? Tony James. Okay. Well, that's the. Well, here's the thing. Sounds he like wrote a common an op-ed name. this weekend. Okay. He wrote an op in this weekend that when Hillary gets elected, he's going to suggest that she passes a new law, new bill that will ha- impose on the American people a 3% tax where the money will go to Wall Street for Wall Street fund managers to manage for them as a retirement fund. In essence, they want to have the American Take your people- 401k, right? No, they want they want the American people to be taxed 3% of their income to go to Wall Street so that they can speculate more. Oh, they just want it to go to them directly, not take over Mm -hmm. your 401k. They just want an extra tax. And they manage it so they can buy more of their stock back. They can can speculate on on all this stuff and, uh, you know, manage you. Call it a retirement fund or whatever. But they want you to have a perpetual tax instead of the income tax going to to the Fed to pay the national debt. They want everybody in America to have to pay 3% of their income to wall street where these fund managers will, uh, have control over your money. Nice. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the things I did want you to bring up. And do you, did you write an article on that or, do, or is it, do you have the original, can you send me the original op-ed on that? Yeah. Uh, I will post it in, uh, your Skype here. Cause, uh, yeah, that, uh, Affects me in a way. We'll just say, we'll yep. leave it. We'll leave it at that. Um, and it it, it makes uh, some some other things make sense. Although I've I knew the other things uh, anyway. But um, yeah, we'll just uh, again leave it at that. But uh, that's about all the time we have for tonight. As always, I appreciate. Uh, Ken coming on, especially when I'm yelling. Not that I'm yelling at you. I'm just yelling to the audience. Um, it's passion is what it is. It's 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 my my passion, I guess. Either that or frustration or a little bit of both, I guess. But um, go to Ken's website, thedailyeconomist.com, and check out Ken's podcast, which have a lot of information uh, on YouTube, you can find them there at the Ken Chorgen channel. I actually have the exact link. Um, you can change the link, you know, to name it something so it's easier. Because right now it's like a bunch of letters. But um, I just copied whatever the link was and put it there. But it's like, it's not something you could tell somebody. But once you get to a certain point and you're way beyond that point um you can actually change your link like if you want it to say like user slash ken or something or the daily economist or whatever that way you know you can give out the url and it makes it easier so just a a note there um but uh definitely check out ken's uh show it's uh always great information and you can listen to that without hearing me yelling and losing my mind so anyway (laughs) that's again all we have for tonight we'll be back tomorrow uh ken will be back uh two weeks from tonight he joins us every other wednesday and thanks everybody for tuning in and again we'll be back tomorrow Have a good night. Listen to police officers' commands. Listen to what we tell you and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you.